Hi, uh, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Momchu, and uh, some of you might know me as uh, the creator of uh, the Python OpenCL Bitcoin miner. Uh, today, I would like to share with you an idea, a rather exotic one, about how we can achieve slightly improved handling of history revision attacks. Uh, but uh, first, what is Bitcoin? Uh, I'd like to describe it as the first decentralized system that allows transfer of ownership. Uh, whatever two parties agree can be represented by an abstract token uh, is transferable from party A for, uh, to party B. Uh, this would allow transfers of anything you can imagine but uh, because it tends to be better representing more abstract types of value, we ended up using it to represent currency. There is, however, uh, an important detail. Uh, to be able to transfer something, you should still be able to retain control of uh, your ownership for as long as desired. Uh, without such a guarantee, the system will be of no purpose to anyone. So, how is value introduced in the system? Uh, for example, value enters whenever someone buys bitcoins and exits with each bitcoin sold. Thus, a free market is required to enable inward and outward flow of value. But this obviously requires a single history or chain of transactions for participants to agree with. Because in the case of conflicting histories, the distribution of wealth would be different too. What is the current solution? How do the participants decide on which is the proper chain of events? Currently, they will always prefer the longest chain. And by prefer, I mean they will broadcast it and they will try to extend it through mining. It is a simple, elegant solution. By definition, there could be only one longest chain. But I think that there is a problem because now every participant will always accept the longest chain even if it erases some or all of his value and this seems to be an irrational decision. I'll try to briefly summarize some of the possible scenarios. Uh, a merchant is for example waiting for six confirmations and then ships something valuable. But, this, but, but his client, an attacker, has secretly prepared an already longer chain which keeps the payment for himself. After receiving the valuable goods, the attacker announces his alternative chain. The merchant, who being the longest chain rule, can only accept the loss. This type of attack is already thoroughly analyzed uh, by many Rosenfeld in his excellent analysis of hash rate based double spending. Uh, success probability for attacker having even slightly more than 50% of total hash power is always 100%. Probability for an attacker with a third of total hash power trying to rewrite six blocks is above 20%. So one in five tries will be successful. Uh, how is the system currently protected from such an attack? One of the reasons we haven't seen a major attack of this sort is because it has a specific cost. The system is designed in such a way that a seller is able to choose the amount of confirmations before considering a payment final, rendering a tax cost greater than the expected profit. Currently, using the official Bitcoin client, a victim will just see some money disappear from his wallet. He should just accept the loss, adjusting required confirmations for particular value to reduce further attacks. But what if the attacker is not seeking profit, but rather destroying confidence in Bitcoin? Such an attack would affect all participants and would be easier to perform in terms of coordination. The attacker doesn't even bother with extracting value from the system. All that matters is to succeed in rewriting the chain of transactions. The consequences can be severe. Imagine what will happen if suddenly a week's worth of transactions is just replaced. This is currently partially prevented by hard-coded checkpoints in the official Bitcoin implementation, 
but it's a centralized solution which is subject to other types of attacks. Also in general, the latest checkpoint is usually some thousands blocks behind. Can we do better? What should a rational user do? Perhaps the rational choice would be to try to reject any longer chain that is in conflict with his unspent outputs. Note that every user has first-hand experience about what backs his bitcoins. As an example, I know that I put some US dollars at an exchange and traded them. Uh, there is no need to trust anybody about this. Yeah. How would the proposed change affect the system? Let's consider some extreme cases. Imagine that just a single merchant is attacked. The software will detect a longer chain conflicting with his subjective history and will enter a special mode. The offending chain will not be broadcasted. Extending the bad chain would be meaningless if expected proceeds from mining it are less than a raised value in the original chain. In this case, the user should be prompted if an attempt to mine on the original chain is desired instead. Unfortunately, the decision not to relay nor mine most probably won't help. The victim is already a block behind. The rest of the network will continue as usual, quickly extending the bad chain. After some hard-coded advantage threshold, for example, two blocks, the user will be notified that the recovery attempt has failed. Obviously, there is no improvement for attacks against single or few participants. But in the opposite case, when almost all participants are affected by a revision attack, the offending chain will be largely ignored very early in the relay phase. In the case where the offending chain does reach some miners, affected peers will prefer to mine on the original chain. Again, this will happen if once erased value is greater than the expected mining proceeds on the offending chain. An attempt to recover is equivalent to a reversed double spent attack. Now, the victims are trying to outweigh the attacker. The probability for successful recovery is exponentially lower with each block added to the bad chain. But this also means that the attempt will either succeed after two blocks or fail completely. Victims with combined hash rate equivalent to the attackers would be always at an advantage. All they need to completely recover is to perform a successful two blocks long revision attack. For example, with one third of total hash power, the attacker's success probability for six blocks attack is 20%. Victims possessing also one third of the power and rewriting two blocks will succeed with probability of 50%. So, in conclusion, Accepting the longest chain expects user to act sometimes in altruistic manner, ignoring their interest. Fortunately, it seems that the rational decision to reject chains, which are in conflict with one's first-hand experience, actually improves Bitcoin's resistance to some of the attacks. If the proposed change is adopted, the probability of successful attack will now depend not only on the number of blocks written and attacker's hash rate, but also on the percentage of full nodes and miners affected. Finally, if a merchant desires to accept payments often and consistently with as few confirmations as possible, he would need to invest in increasing his ability to impact network behavior, namely being a full verifying and relaying node, and more importantly, being a miner. Thank you. No, any questions? Hi, my name's Anthony. Might sound like a bit of a stupid question, but what happens uh, when all of the blocks are mined, or when, all, when the mining is done? How, how, how will it proceed well, after that in 140 years' time? This is not exactly in the scope of uh, this talk, but uh, mining never ends, actually. The, the, block, the block reward asymptotically approaches zero. But people already pay small transaction fees to the miners, especially for large transactions. The, 
use, use the microphone man. Sorry. The block reward, newly created coins, asymptotically approach zero. That, is, that much is true. But transactions, especially transactions that are at certain risk of being spam or large transactions, the people who submit the transactions usually pay a small fee, a transaction fee to the miner that mines the transaction. So the expectation, and people are talking about whether or not this will work and whether we need to add some extra incentive, but the expectation is that as the block re reward goes to zero, the transaction fees will provide increasingly the incentive to mine. Am I right in saying that the number of bitcoins is limited to this 21 million and it's the, the mining itself yes, which provides uh, the... The reward is uh, gradually decreasing. Yes, I understand that, yeah, but, but if there's, a, if there's a, a limit, you're saying it never ends. Mining never ends. Mining or... itself. And Exactly. Well, what? Miners are compensated with new coins and transactions. New yeah. coins will eventually end, but mining will never end. Because people who continue to mine will continue to be able to collect transactions. So there's still an incentive for that. Okay, so, there's, so there's, there'll be no new bitcoins issued, but there'll still be mining activities and blocks discovered and hashed and encoded. All right, I can understand. Thanks very much. I just probably to clarify, so you're basically saying if a given node or on the network or, uh, sees that the next block contradicts in its memory pool and the, the things that it issued, it's just going to drop it? Not exactly the memory pool, but uh, you, you know that you committed some value uh, some time behind. And if somebody announces a chain that is in conflict with your subjective knowledge of your value you have in the chain, then it is irrational to accept that, block. that longest chain. Okay. Just as a thought, would it be possible? I mean, I, I think the current Bitcoin network, there's a certain, you're not absolutely assured every transaction hits every node on the network. Uh, is there a possibility of improving that reliability and then for example, if there's a block that has a spend that never hit any of the, the memory pools, that all of the nodes on the network would treat it kind of the same way, like this contradicts our subjective uh, value. So just so that that being a simple example. Only, only if there's not a contradictory transaction that they did see. So, so yeah. There's only, there, there can only ever be a conflict on two sides of a double spend. Mm. So, um, a tr sorry. There can only ever be a conflict on two sides of a double spend. So if somebody simply sends out a transaction and didn't pay a good enough fee, then that nobody ever saw that transaction, then there's nothing has changed. And if then they see after a while that, oh, this transaction never came through, and they submit it again with a transaction fee, everybody will see the second one. Maybe the one or two people who saw the first one will consider it to have been a, a, a double spend, but if the first one never gets committed, if the first one never enters a, a fork of the blockchain, then this logic still does not kick in. It is only when you have a chain that seems to be the longest, but, contra but has a contradictory transaction to what you saw, that this special logic kicks in and you give the block and you support the blockchain you saw and give it a chance to recover. Yeah, however low the chance of uh, recovery is. I'm saying basically that you should always attempt to recover despite the chances perhaps low. Um, so correct me if I'm if I'm wrong, but this this defense mode it, it is more successful uh, the larger the per, uh, percentage of the mining population that that is affected exactly so have you looked into possibilities of 
uh, nodes that trust other nodes, they could share uh, information and thus, like if, for example, if, if my node trusts your node and uh, a, a bad block comes along, I, I could uh, share that with you. So even though it may not directly affect you, you could think of it as sort of a, uh, an alliance, if you will. Yeah, I personally restrain from thinking in any direction, um, uh, introducing some kind of trust, because this is against uh, Bitcoin philosophy. Uh, otherwise, why not? Everything's possible, just uh, this is against the idea. I was wondering how computationally in expensive it would be to have such a solution because every n every node has to check uh, does the current block conflict with anything I know in the past. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, generally, the, the checks are already in place. Uh, you, you know what your addresses are, you know what your balance is in a particular chain. So you can uh, quickly distinguish if a new announced chain erases some of your value. Of course, uh, some new code would be needed, but uh, I'm not sure. Perhaps it would be too complicated <laughs> to implement uh, versus the um, the protection it gives. More questions? Uh, one, one advantage of this, this defense is that it, it, it may never be needed in that, um, it, yeah. if implemented, it, it may never be needed in that uh, it, it would greatly increase the cost of a, of a revision attack and uh, make the make predicting uh, the success difficult. Uh, so if, uh, if enough nodes, uh, you know, used this, uh, it, it, it may not be needed to ever go into recovery mode. Mm -hmm. We're touching actually an area that is uh, not uh, really developed currently uh, in Bitcoin. Uh, we really need a deeper game theory uh, view over the system. Uh, what are the incentives? Uh, is there an equilibrium achievable? Is the system now stable, assuming everybody is behaving rationally? Uh, but this is an open question. So, thank you.